putting your comments through the chat and flow. I found a great place in the mind. This comment refers to something that he calls System 1 and System 2. No, I'm not to be confused with number 1 and number 2. Instance to say that the equivalent to the left right hemispheres of the brain might be a little too overly simplistic. But these two basic categories do go a long way in exploiting human motivation and effectiveness in any situation or power. System 1, for example, is impulsive and fully unfocused. It's easy going and looking fast. It's quick to jump to conclusions for better words. It's also highly creative and innovative. When we're more at ease than we're not going to get out of place, system one can thrive and provide some truly great grief and insight. System two, on the other hand, is much slower to come to other conclusions. It's more rigid, inflexible, and cautious, but it's also much more focused and thorough. It really comes to play when we're in a poorly sticky situation that's really complex. And we really gotta put attention to that side by. So, paradoxically, when we're under stress, that's when system two comes in. It keeps us more on task and more on the ball, but unfortunately, at the expense of creativity. It runs the most heavy to balance between these two extremes. Finding ways to take advantage of the outside of these two conflicting strategies while doing our best also to avoid their drawbacks. But, as I say, we don't always get to do it. But, yeah, many times, this is all really fascinating, but what does it have to do with history, which is how things have come out of here? In this video, I like to propose that common theory of system one and system two can be also juxtaposed over various historical regions, civilizations, and people to help explain the incredible history. And there are two parts of the world in particular that I'd like to draw attention to China and Europe. Yes, East and West. Ancient China, along with ancient Mesopotamia, is just about the oldest civilization we know of. It's where it pretty well all began. Situated on the farthest extent of the Asian landmass, it was always more open to invasion from others. Unlike the ancient civilizations of the Mediterranean, who at first at any rate, managed to develop with a little more isolation thanks to being surrounded mainly by water. Ancient China had a lot more land mass for invaders to ride or march in from. Hence, their eventual construction of this. In other words, ancient China was under a lot more stress from outside. So my assertion is that geography played an enormous role in choosing whether a civilization would become more System 1-y or System 2-y. There may have been some kind of genetical racial thing going on, but that'd be way above my pay grade to talk about. But I can assert that obviously there was a cultural thing going on. Ancient China took civilization to its absolute pinnacle, but they never truly jumped beyond that pinnacle. Now, remember that System 2 comes into play when stress is involved, and the need for more attention to detail and focus is paramount. Being more open to invasion meant ancient Chinese civilizations had to be organized. And maybe, in the end, they just became too organized. Don't get me wrong, many great innovations were still made by ancient Chinese civilizations, obviously, but in the end, there seemed to be a cap placed on it. In some ways, ancient Rome was even more organized. It had the most efficient taxation system the world had ever seen, even beyond that of the Chinese. And they may have invented concrete, along with a modern legal system and modern plumbing, but they never invented gunpowder or paper printing, or even for that matter, paper. The ancient Chinese did. 
But once again, that strange System 2 cap came into play. Ancient Rome wound up becoming even more under stress than ancient China, so much so that it finally fell. And what it left behind was something rather unique. An unprecedented playground for System 1 to play and even eventually thrive in. And it all began with something we call the Dark Ages. If you recall, System 1 is unfocused. It's laid back, but it's also very innovative. But in order to have that innovation, it needs room to breathe. Elbow room. For the better part of a thousand years, Western Europe and Central Europe walloped in filth and disorganization. It was aimless. It did not have any real purpose beyond vague religious rewards. But it did have one thing. It had a hidden System 2 foundation left behind by ancient Rome. And it was just enough for System 1 to lift itself onto. Besides the mongrel hordes, medieval Europe never truly faced a major external invasion. They fought each other like hell, but even that seemed to be a symptom of System 1. And in spite of constantly fighting each other, European powers tended to be a patchwork, each one contributing another piece to a jigsaw puzzle no one truly understood. These guys down here contributed high art, perspective, and a higher analyzation of reality. These guys over here contributed global exploration for a new global age. These guys in the center contributed the expansion of knowledge and reproduction of it like never before. Backwards Europe never got much attention from the rest of the world and therefore was left alone to allow its System 1 to take over. And when System 1 took over, it eventually allowed for the foundation of various System 2s. And as long as those System 2s were not too huge and overpowering, System 1 could continue doing its thing. One naval empire after another took its turn at bat on top of the mount each contributing ever more System 1 innovations, but eventually having to relinquish to the next one in line. Soon enough, we got to the US of A, the ultimate System 1-y for the last hundred years. They brought us to the moon, but so far, no further. It appears even the US of A is starting to relinquish its System 1 king status to others. And apparently, it's going full circle, all the way back to ancient China, or more appropriate to say, now modern China. The Russians surely did give the US of A a good run for its money as king of System 1. And who knows, they may still prove to be the next System 1 kings. If they can learn to leave Ukraine alone and start focusing on shit that matters. But apparently, the next switch over one way or another is coming. So where does that leave the modern world we live in? where System 2 seems to be taking over quite a fair bit more. Yes, we got new iPads and iPhones and this and that, and we got YouTube and we got the internet, but all this seems to be just further proliferation of technology that was already laid the foundation of in 1959, when the semiconductor transistor was invented. The next System 1 great leap forward will probably be the biological revolution genetic engineering, nanotechnology, changing not the world around us, but changing us fundamentally, our very bodies and makeup. But as to which System 1 torchbearer will light the way, I do not know. But I suspect it might not even be modern China or the US or Russia. Instead, it will be some part of the world we never guessed it would be, a part of the world everyone ignores. And therefore, it's System 1 can thrive. Yeah!